hey there, everybody. Welcome back to uh, this show. I'm not really familiar with what, uh, what, what it's called, but uh, I am your go-to buyer exorcist, uh, also known as, uh, well, <laughs> I can't say my name, but you know, you can say it. You can say it three times. Uh, I am just here waiting for the DJs to get home, and I found this microphone just sitting here. Uh, I had to tie down the little fellow that runs a show. <laughs> Don't worry, he's, he's doing okay. He's a little uh, tied up right now. <laughs> hey, you son of Beetlejuice! 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 Oh, wait! Oh, oh, stop it! Oh, okay! God! <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. That, guy, uh, that dude just came out of nowhere. Um, I think he's gone now, so we're good. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, oh, what was I doing before? Oh, uh, welcome back to Pretend World's Real People. As always, I'm Tyler, and happy Halloween. This glorious, wonderful holiday. Christmas can suck it, uh, because this holiday is the best by far, I hope you have some amazing plans. I'm seeing Trick or Treat at Alamo Draft House tonight. I'm super excited for it. I hope everybody else has some really awesome, fun things planned for the evening. If not, hopefully you had a bunch of fun over the weekend, and now you're just kind of, you know, cooling off for uh, this Monday night. Anyway, let's get into this special Halloween episode I have for you. Now, I had, as I said before, I had the great fortune of sitting down with so many people this month. Uh, but this episode is really cool because I had a chance to sit down with somebody who is so immensely talented and has this crazy, just a crazy bright future ahead of him as far as his career goes. And he's just the sweetest person on the planet. Uh, we <laughs> we were actually chatting. We both had late nights, him later than myself, but we were chatting the morning after. And uh, <laughs> we we took a second to kind of wake up and get the whole interview off and running, but we had a blast. Uh, just talking about his upbringing, uh, transferring from theater to film, and finding a really awesome uh, niche in creature performance. And that, of course, is the wonderful Kevin Kepi. We talk about, uh, you know, Smile and how that has completely taken over the box office. Even weeks and weeks after its release, it's just gangbusters. It's doing amazing. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to make sure the uh, the guy that was here earlier doesn't come back. While I'm doing that, I'm going to hit play, and I hope all of you enjoy this wonderful interview I had with the amazing Kevin Kepi. My name is Kevin Kepi, and I am an actor and creature actor uh, based in Los Angeles, California. So Having some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it it's not it's not a like decaf right you are <laughs> since you were working so late last night yeah it's it's not decaf but i will say it is um it is where you just dump in the grinds and then you stir the hot water in. so it's nothing really fancy it's whatever gets the job done at this time in the morning <laughs> <laughs> don't worry i do that all the time <laughs> well i i do want to ask uh how this is always a really fun question to ask guests who work especially in like creature performance how did you yes get into the entertainment industry to begin with did you already have an interest in it or was it something you sort of fell into uh kind of both uh well i don't know it was kind of like a, a, a merge of the best of both worlds of all worlds is that i am um i am a theatrically trained actor so i i grew up as an actor and in, in well i started acting in my late 20s I uh, started doing uh, adult acting classes at, at our local community theater uh, where I'm from in Springfield, Missouri. So I've been acting for about 14 years, uh, 15, and uh, uh, started my first theater production of Dracula 14 years ago with uh, a show that changed my life and changed my world. I met some of the, my best friends, had some of the best experiences, and man, it was such a rewarding experience uh, uh, for it just changed everything. And so off from there, I just did a lot, I did lots more theater at that time. I also started doing some film, did my first movie called Redneck Carnage, which is a really <laughs> awesome, bad B movie. Uh, my friend at the time, John Osunovich. And uh, so that's a lot of fun. So uh, just so I, off from there, I did a lot of, a lot of different Shakespeare shows, did Shakespeare in the park, uh, starting involved with this uh, theater company called like, Class Act Productions. We did Bucket the Vampire Slayer stage parodies live on stage, like original um, scripts, like parodied from the from the show. So we did all seven seasons of that. 
uh, we only did 10 episodes uh, a year. So sometimes we do like two episodes or every month or whatever, but uh, we did the full seven years. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. I was a showrunner, that producer, directed many episodes, uh, tech. I mean, just, you know, lots of stuff and actor, of course. The Batman parody, we did a Batman parody show of the 1960s show. And uh, that was a lot of fun to play the Joker on stage for five years. Uh, so I love the Joker. <laughs> and yeah, so a lot of that stuff all the time uh, intermingling with uh, with film that's going on. And Southwest Missouri, where I'm from, originally from Iowa, but uh, growing up in, in Missouri, especially where I spent most of my adult life, it's a... Uh, a uh, highly creative uh, environment of uh, theater professionals and film professionals. Uh, Missouri State University is there. So there's a bunch of people coming out of uh, the film program and the theater program. So it was just a very rewarding experience. And it just, you know, I kept on going from there to there. Loved doing uh, just a lot of different roles uh, as an actor and just perfecting the craft as much as I can and honing the craft. And as well as being creepy, crawly, gnarly, and eerie. And we also did a show called uh, Grave Tales on stage. We did that probably for, gosh, how many years? Five, six years? I mean, five years. And um, it's a, it's a, it was a, a show that was all original scripts, all horror scripts. And orig they're all original scripts, usually written by my friend, Sean Parker. And I directed a bunch of them. And so the same deal, like, allowed us, and he was able to write scripts that are <clears throat> to our strengths and like mm -hmm. Kevin is good for this one this one and so just doing that in, in the film it was just that's how I, I started and that's how I end up in Los Angeles <laughs> you know what that reminds me of you know those those tales of of yesteryear of Hollywood uh you know uh -huh. stars of the 70s and 80s who came from Iowa or Kansas and you know made yeah. the jump what what inspired you to make that jump to LA especially if you were in such a creative sort of area in that location you were growing up and working uh, as an adult what what drew you to that well thank you good question um well it started really off I did this show called Cyclops uh with Queen City Collective uh, uh, a company I was a part of uh, and uh so I was a Cyclops and uh, it was really really well received we did it out outdoors uh take on the Greek play of course and my friend uh, Seth Harrell, he had he had wrote me a letter. I mean, he lived in the same town. He wrote me a letter, and uh, I got in the mail, of course. And it was a very sweet letter, probably four pages, just really saying that you know he was in the show too. Um, his his wife Nicole is also my partner in the company, and wrote a really sweet letter saying like you know you were really really good in the show. People really really enjoyed it. You should really. I you, I don't I, I can totally see you being in Los Angeles and doing this professionally and sharing your gifts and your talents with with the world, and just really uh, elevating my spirits and that's that's what a good friend does and uh, what good friends are there for you, and so he he put uh, a little nugget in my brain, and it's got me thinking, and I had by that time I had a couple of friends <clears throat> that were already moved out to to Los Angeles from the Dracula production two thousand eight that we did. And yeah, so it was always in my mind. I came out to visit Los Angeles and it was good. And, and uh, let's see. Well, though, yeah, so I came out and they really wanted me to come out. I really wanted to go out, but I still had a lot of things going on with responsibilities in the theater uh, company and stuff like that. So we finished out Buffy. We finished out some stuff with a with class act. And I just felt like now's the time. And I really enjoy that creative environment there and everything, uh, but I definitely felt my head bumping against the ceiling uh, for a lot of different ways. Uh, and some in small town areas, there's it's, it's really good because it allows you to to have um, uh, the the ability and just for business too. It's a good good way to to uh, create a business in those areas because the risk is is low and the opportunities are, are big because there's just not a lot of competition and things like that so you can expand and grow and create and all that stuff but uh, at the same point in time i was really needing especially for film the theater community like i said is pretty good there but for the film community uh it just it's limited there has been some some uh feature films of uh, big productions that have come through there uh, winter's bone was a big one uh, that was shot in the ozarks 
uh, my friend Nathan did the hands, uh, some some hands and dead man's hands in it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but there hasn't been a whole lot of really professional film productions and film sets there. And so I really just wanted to do that. I wanted to grow. So that was just where my path was leading me. Uh, I just need to have open skies and not a ceiling right above my head. Uh, and I just, just need to keep growing and uh, just keep moving uh, because my water, the, the, the water of my, my river kept, kept wanting to run down, down the way. And uh, I just didn't want to block it. So I just needed to go where the energy and the movement was going. Yeah, that, you know what, I can relate to that heavily being based yeah. in Denver. I'm, you know, at that oh, point, cool in my uh, just turned 30 this year and hitting like you said you're hitting that ceiling and you're going well, what else can I do yeah. so that makes complete sense and making the jump to, to LA you had friends you had associates you had people you can hang out with and network with I mean how long did it really take for you to develop that sort of working actor uh, working performer potential in Los Angeles given that it's a new region and a whole new market yeah it's interesting it's very interesting to me like how small town Los Angeles is, at least in my community, uh, for FX shops and uh, people that do makeup and uh, creature acting and stuff. And so it's kind of just as it is like in Missouri, small towns, it's, it's really who you know and and who you get along with. Do they trust you? Do they know who what you've done? And uh, do they like what you've done and things like that? So it took me I moved out. I moved here uh, on New Year's, New Year's Day, uh, actually January second of two thousand nineteen. So I've been here for almost four years. Oh wow! Uh, the first year was definitely getting established, and um, I got Doug Jones a couple times. You know, I've met him before previously. Uh, of course, he's I I highly love Doug and everything he's done. He's been <laughs> such a, uh, an inspiration for me, of course, uh, for many years. And so I got to see him that year, but then the next year was uh, the pandemic and then everything just stopped. And um, it, it, so that was, yeah, the brakes hit everything. So even though I was getting uh, set up and established in, in Los Angeles, uh, for my home, my job, like finances, all that kind of stuff work, uh, I couldn't really work a whole lot. So I, I first started really getting some more work last year in 2020, and uh, very gratefully so too, right? Worked on um, a show with uh, Disney on Disney Plus called The Quest. That was the first production, I, uh, the first professional prof production I've done here in, in LA. We shot that in, uh, in Napa Valley, California in February when I was there. And then also last year. So last year I did that one. I worked on Smile. We shot Smile uh, last November. And then I worked on a show that's coming up still called uh, Cabinet of Curiosities. Uh, it's, it's coming up on Netflix next week. Uh, it's produced by uh, Guillermo del Toro and he actually hosts it too. So I'm um, in two episodes of that. So we shot that, like I said, like la this time last year and then early into uh, early January this year. So. So thankfully, things are kind of are starting to come forward more and doing more fun yeah. things, and and also doing fun makeups like a monster palooza and doing a bunch of other fun things. So, so that's kind of how the my progress has been going so far. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you just hit this huge stride, like post COVID, mm -hmm. a, a, a boom, especially with creature performance and getting into the horror genre even more. So, I mean, is that something you want to keep doing? Do you want to? sort of go the Doug Jones route, especially now that you've worked under a Guillermo del Toro production already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I definitely love that. I, I like, I love creature acting, performing uh, a super performance. So I, I love, I'm not just a super performer. Um, uh, Derek Mears is also uh, a creature actor. He's, he's done a lot of really fun things. He was like Jason, one of the Friday, Friday, Friday 13th. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> uh, but Derek is great. And <clears throat> He is a great creature, creature actor performer, but he, but when I, he, when I met him, he's like, first and foremost, I'm an actor. And like, when I, when I come to set, I know my lines, I know my, my, my intentions, my motivations. I've done the research in the character. I'm not just there to, to perform in a, in the suit. Like there's intention behind the eyes, behind my movements and what I'm doing. So it's more than just wearing a suit or just doing makeup that you're embodying a character and the character means something to you uh, and you're part of the story. Uh, so, and that's something I, 
that I definitely agree with and and have agreed with. And that's something that, yes, where I want to keep keep con- continuing to do creature acting performance and wearing fun, cool suits that are uh, movable works of art, um, as like <laughs> as people want to see from the quest that I've done or uh, Cabinet of Curiosities, like they're they're actual like. Uh, pieces of art, like full body pieces of art. And it's just really amazing. And it's such a rewarding experience to be able to uh, wear that. And it's made specifically for you. So I, I enjoy that. And, uh, but yeah, so to keep on doing creature acting and performance and as well as just, just acting. So uh, I'd love to get back to doing more like uh, maybe even some theater here in Los Angeles a little bit, uh, but just more uh, uh, just other roles, drama roles or, I've played many villains. I love playing villains, uh, even though I'm a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so all across the board. So I just I, I enjoy and love acting. And with the uh, the plethora of characters that you've played throughout your entire that you fulfilled throughout your entire career, it takes a lot out of you. I mean, it, it, let's put <laughs> out aside the the physical manifestation of of creature acting, but also the emotional, uh, you know, and psychological effects of just being in a theater and playing that character for weeks or months on end, what, uh, what do you have in your life that gives you, you know, passion elsewhere that allows you to, to decompress and, you know, kind of live life to its fullest outside of the entertainment industry? Yeah, let's see. Well, I, I, yeah, I started acting because I was a very big introvert and, and I need to to talk better to share myself to express myself and so so i've always been very comfortable being myself being away going hiking being alone seeing movies alone traveling alone so easily whenever i after i express myself or i can be an extrovert or talk or whatever it's very easy for me to go to go in uh or into to go away like to, to travel i love you know traveling europe uh, traveling the U.S., driving, flying. I love, you know, love, love getting into nature. It's all very important to me, and especially uh, as as I've gotten older, as the years always go by, like you just know that you definitely need to pull back and recharge your batteries when you can. And that means, for me, you know, like going to nature, camping, just being, existing, uh, thinking, reflecting, going within you know, meditating, doing, you know, I do yoga every day. So it's just one of those things you just, you got to bring it back to the center and, and just be, and be present. And uh, so that, and also reconnecting with friends and just and getting away uh, whenever I can. I love to go to Missouri at least once a year. Uh, Missouri is great uh, for just tons of lakes, tons of amazing rivers. So floating the rivers, you know, uh, going on the lake and there's a lot of fun stuff to do there. So so yeah, definitely. That's how I can kind of decompress a little bit, and, and especially in Los Angeles, it's it's really busy here, and so I'm always fine tuning that for how the best way to take care of and manage myself because it is needed. You can't always just be going, going, going because you're gonna find yourself really just being rubbed down raw. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a huge crash, and then you're watching Netflix for three days straight because you don't know yep. what else to do. <laughs> Yep, your body will tell you that. I had a, and t- my body told me years ago uh, when I was doing uh, Buffy, I was getting really, really stressed. I had a lot of things going on. It was a very, uh, a lot of stuff going on in different film things. And I was getting stressed and really, really busy and not eating well, not sleeping well. And boy, I had a really bad anxiety, anxiety attack um, like during a rehearsal. Right, I was saying some lines. I played Spike uh, in, from Buffy. So, and Spike has some really meaty lines. So it was a read through. I said these lines and I just just love saying them. And it just ring true and my body felt it. And then I just started kind of feeling faint just a little bit. So I had to sit down and I my energy was started dropping. I'm like, what's going on? So I called, called rehearsal early, went to bed uh, early and woke up with a really bad anxiety attack, which I thought I was having a heart attack. Uh, and I had no idea, but when the firemen came and, you know, they, I, I, they, I opened the door for them after I called 911, the firemen came and like, it all changed. Like that, that, that heart attack feeling that I had just went away. Um, so I sat down 
And so it sat down and they talked with me and I eventually went to the hospital and they checked me out and they couldn't find anything. Uh, they put a, a cardio meter thing on me for a yeah. week and just, and so anyways, with that experience, uh, so I must've had some really, really bad anxiety attack and I still have to be careful. I couldn't have caffeine. I couldn't have coffee probably for two years and it was really a bad time oh my God. because a little bit. <laughs> A little bit of caffeine, my hearing would start going out. Like it started going faint. I, <clears throat> like I was about ready to faint. So, anyways, that experience told me, and it, it re constantly reminds me that we definitely need to take care of our bodies because I can be really a strong person and be very like charged, lead, go forward. But boy, as much as you think your mind can always go and your body can always go, it cannot go all the way. We definitely need to listen to our bodies and take care of our bodies to not get ourselves to that point where your body says, all right, buddy, enough is enough. And uh, so that was a good lesson for me. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. That, that gives me anxiety just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. And the no caffeine for two years. I mm -hmm. hats off to you. I don't know how you, you yeah. managed to do that, but you know, it's for your health. So <laughs> there's good reason behind yeah, it. Yeah, I know. So I was definitely doing decaf. I do a, I do, I get a decaf coffee at uh, like Mud House, the big coffee shop that I love there. A decaf coffee, <clears throat> just a few sips of decaf, even that amount of caffeine would start sending me almost into anxiety state. Just a, that's why I knew that there is enough caffeine and, and decaf. So if my body is just super sensitive to it. So, but yeah, so yeah, just have to, we always have to be careful that our bodies are finite and our lives are finite and we have to take care of our bodies uh, to, to, because if we don't take care of our bodies, uh, you know, we don't have anything in this world. So we got <laughs> we gotta be there for it. <laughs> the, <laughs> this, this just, <laughs> just properly into uh, one of the, last few questions I have, but it's, uh, yeah. if you have a story from your career that, or from your life that you could share with our listeners, whether it be something, you know, working on set, working in theater, something happening in your personal life, uh, but something so crazy, it could be funny, it could be a little weird, just it's something that stands out so immensely to your memory that you would easily tell it at a party amongst friends. Do you have anything in your <laughs> arsenal you could share with us? Oh boy. Uh, Oh boy. Um, I'd have to think about that one, <laughs> but uh, I mean, a small one that just briefly comes to my mind. Oh boy. I don't know. Uh, it's not really big, but just what comes to my mind right now, we did a uh, evil dead, the musical on stage oh and I played a uh, lot of backstage also played a, uh, uh ashes like evil hand and stuff and uh it was fun but anyway so like on our last show night like uh there were two trees like uh that are um that uh assault the young lady in the forest and so i was one of the trees so i gotta play like one of the trees like on stage uh you know like kind of with, like what children do at six years old and yeah. so anyways every night every night we would another guy and i would go out you know and and put this huge like foam tree on our bodies uh last show night like we just uh we we just totally stripped down to everything except for our boxers and like we're just gonna go on stage and just like be only in our underwear with this big tree on so it was kind of a fun little inside joke that uh yeah we kind of went on stage with, just with our underwear on of course with a big foam tree on but <laughs> yeah anyways that was a nice little little thing but the audience had no idea because we're inside these trees so <laughs> um, it's, it's something sure for you <laughs> yeah indeed granted i know there's a lot more experiences and fun things but probably this early in the morning i can't think of anything right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah listeners it's about uh 9 30 his time and he was working late uh and he still showed yeah. up for the show so i yeah I thank you can't show my gratitude enough for that. Uh, well, yeah, we'll I was working the... late on. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I was, I was working late on a, a really cool little short film last night uh, with a cool a director named uh, Julian Terry. So I was up, uh, we're, it was really cool. It was going to come out. He's he's doing a short film and he may uh, may try to pitch it to to turn it into a feature, but uh, really cool guy. And so we're up real late and I had uh, some makeup on. So it was, it was late night for me, but uh, yeah. <laughs> oh 
now now he's sipping on coffee and a LaCroix or a bubbly. Yep, you got it. Yep. And I just spilled it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll wrap it up with these last two. The first one being, uh, if you have any advice you could pass on to any of the listeners here who are either, you know, they could be starting out uh, right now trying to pursue a career in the arts, or maybe they're in it right now and they're trying to stay in it. Do you have any advice that you've kind of held on to that you could pass along to the listeners? Uh, absolutely. Uh, definitely for being here in Los Angeles is uh, persevere, have be persist, have faith and belief in what you're doing. Uh, know who you are, know what your skills are, always keep learning, uh, always keep adapting, <clears throat> and always use, I want to say always, it's always very helpful to have a nice, strong community of friends uh, that are always around you, that you support them, and they support you, uh, and not like uh, people that are just wanting to tell you what, what's going on, but but always having those friends and, and keeping in touch with them and, and being honest with them and allowing them to be honest with you uh, for even uh, as um, contemporaries. So just always keep growing, learning, adapting, and uh, nobody's born in, into this world knowing everything. So we're always evolving, growing, and adapting. And we do so by listening, by being patient, by being kind, by by giving, by taking, and uh, and just by, by loving and having compassion in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> All yeah. of it. Perfect. perfect. Uh, Thanks. And... <laughs> Um, as far as, I mean, obviously you have, uh, the cabinet of curiosities coming out next, uh, yes. 25th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th oh on Netflix. God. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm a huge Del Toro nut. So I, I'm oh, so yeah. excited for that smile is out. Uh, and I, everybody, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's still October, uh, perfect yes. for the season, but is there anything that I can give a shout out or promote with this episode for you, whether it's a project you have coming up that you want to advertise or an organization you really believe in? Is there anything I can, I could pop in there for you? Boy. Um, I was just going to say, I kept my curiosities, uh, but um, you just kind of nailed everything, but really just smile. Uh, smile is, is a really good, awesome movie uh, written directed by Parker Finn. And he's done an amazing job with it. And uh it's done really well in the box office, but uh, it'd be great if that thing just launches into the into the universe because it's a really, really good horror movie. And we need more good movies like that, horror movies and just movies in general that are uh, that have, are really well directed, really well written uh, and not just uh, cookie cutters. And so that's a legit, really good one. And a lot of people are having an amazing time and experience with it. So the more that we can uh, show Paramount uh, that we want more movies like that or just the at Los Angeles in Hollywood, we want more movies like that is by talking about it, by seeing it, by telling friends about it and uh, the supporting it. Uh, movies like that, not just necessarily just smile, but just good movies in the movie theaters, especially. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. I mean, it, just to stroke your ego a little bit, you scared the yeah. shit out of me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> smile. So thank good. you. For You're that. welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> spilled a lot of coffee on myself. I was not expecting it. Uh, so, yeah, as we we wrap up, I just want to say ahead, again, thank you so much for joining me on your early morning, especially after a late night shoot. I know how crazy and arduous that is the next day. Uh, but I have one more thing for us before we close out, before I stop yes. the recording. Uh, it's what we call an awkward goodbye, and I always like to forward it by asking if you've ever seen Wayne's World. Yes, and I knew you're going to do this, so I've been anticipating. Oh. It. <laughs> <laughs> you're the best you're the best all right well uh <laughs> we'll get started with this here uh for the awkward goodbye starting in three uh <laughs> that's all folks <laughs>